I'm Jose. Uh, so I'll be talking about the past storage and form. And before I do that, well, while I do that, let me just give you some motivation. Uh, I think we both heard, we've heard this already from when uh, previous presentation. Uh, so this and we have a vector. And we're trying to take this Fourier transform. It's this free Fourier transform. Then this is going to take n squared operations. By this I mean by the fact that I mean this is going to be a metric multiplication. So like multiplying one col one row with one column with one one column with one row is going to take n multiplications. So in that n times are a matrix that we answer. So the idea is that we're going to cleverly decompose this matrix in the following form, and I'll find everything that we're going to do later. And once we have this decomposition, this is going to take n log operations. So just to give an example, <coughs> suppose we have a vector, I don't know, that is on the size of 10 billion, which is not unrealistic given like Facebook exists and all these things. Uh, and that this is like, <laughs> suppose, it's supposed to do in these number of operations takes one second. This is also not unrealistic, like maybe not your laptop. Your laptop might not be able to do this, but many computers can. And they don't even have to be like super computer. Um, well, we calculate the discrete Fourier transform using the fast Fourier transform uh, for a vector of this size. Well, it's going to take n divided by this lot 2. It's going to take n, n log n, which is approximately 32. Approximately 32 seconds. If we take the discrete Fourier transform, the regular way that we would have done it otherwise, it's going to take n squared steps, which is 10 to the 20. And this is going to be approximately 360 meters. <laughs> so, yes? Uh, are these G, B, and S, are those matrices? Yeah, these are matrices that are going to be equal to F of N. And I'm going to define them uh, just right now. OK. Um, so first, the theorem, I'm just going to rewrite the theorem a little bit better. <coughs> so I'm going to write the theorem first. I'm going to give some definitions. Uh, and then I'm going to try to give kind of like a little proof of it, if I have time. Let, by the way, throughout this, we're going to let our n be equal to a matrix that size 2 to the j. And then, if it's out of that size, there's something you can do called zero padding, but uh, I'm not going to go over that. But you can just assume that this is the size of your matrix, where this is a natural number. And you have the Fourier matrix. So, 
what is empty? So, I mean, this is the identity matrix of size n over 2. We assume that this is like this, so it's okay. Um, this is zero matrix, so I'm not going to write it down. And this is the Fourier conjugate of the Fourier transform of the Fourier matrix. So I'm going to just define dn and even odd. <coughs> Definition, so D, M, or some capital M, is a diagonal matrix. So everything except the diagonal is zero. Uh, with entries, uh, say, it's going to have entries e to the pi i m where this can anyone see this or is it too small? So an example of how this would look is something like this. is this even odd matrix. And again, this is the notation of the book. So some matrix SM that is of this form for, by the way, M even. Um, so this is going to be a permutation matrix that if I give it a vector, it's going to push all the even numbers to the top half, and it's going to push all the odd numbers to the bottom half. Um, so some use. I'm just going to write it informally, and then I'll give an example. Even entries to top half, and then <coughs> odd entries to bottom. So an example, let's look at how S6 interacts with some vector. So this might be a little bit small, uh, but I, I'm trying to, it's going to be good that I just do everything in one side. So it's going to be, how this is going to look as a matrix, is that it's kind of going to be like an identity-ish. So it's going to be one, it's going to be zero here. In this row, we're going to have zeros, but in the bottom, we're going to have the first even term. So we're going to have the first even term here, and then the first odd term in the bottom. And then we're going to have the next even term as being the second row of the bottom. And then here we're going to have zeros, and we're going to have zero, one, zero, 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 zero one. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then let's we interact with some vector v0, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5. Well, how I just said, it's going to push the even terms up. So it's going to have v0, v2, v4, v1. Three and five. Okay. So yeah. So any any such uh, any matrix that holds that property will work. So like if you took like the first and third columns and switch those, that would still be like that's valid. Um, yes. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. So so let's say we take the first and third columns. Yeah. Which would make, mean that uh, like this one. even evenly yeah evenly indexed entries are like swapped. Yeah, so all the, all everything even is going to go up, and then, yeah, everything for a, uh, a vector is just everything even is going to go up, everything odd is going to go down. And, and different permutations of even is going up and odd is going down are fine, right? Those are like all valid entries. 
No, no, no. Like, I, I specifically want them to be ordered. So, okay, like, it's, it's zero. exactly this. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for asking. Order. Yeah, that's a very good question. Is there any questions so far? Anyone? Good. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get over this, and once we have this, it's very easy to derive that. I mean, not very easy, it's just kind of like, you kind of just do it. If I don't have time, then it's actually just in the book, but at the end of the day, this is like the crucial step, which is, let's look at a property of like this certain symmetry that we have when we look at the vectors, um, when we look at the vectors of some Fourier coefficient, of the, um, I guess the entries of a Fourier coefficient. So remark, I'll just say that this is a remark, but it's more like a derivation, or like a better word. So let me, the map is like sending, let just this be the discrete Fourier transform. The first thing is note, okay, so we can write this as B and Uh, subtract one, blah, 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 and then you're getting the same thing. 
which is good. So because then they look very similar. Um, and let's not forget the problems. Okay. Um, so now the main thing that I want to do here is. is factor first this term out and second just kind of get this into a nicer form so that I get rid of the 2n and it looks more similar to this. Uh, so what I'll write is the following. It's not very different. So this is not going to change almost at all. So I'm just rewriting this almost. Uh, I'm going to leave it as m times n, but instead I'm going to get the 2 and put it from the bottom. Sorry, this should have been. And I'm going to put it on the bottom. This is the same thing as this. For this, I'm going to leave what's here. This term here, I can just factor the same way that I did here. But I have this plus one term, so I'm going to pull it up. Uh, and this is going to be e to the minus 2 pi i m over i. And now, I'm just going to define some notation to make it simpler for us. Then f of m is equal, I'm going to call this a m. Plus so now this is a nice symmetry that we, we want to see. I'm gonna show you. So now let's consider this term here. M plus n over two, which the way that you can think of it is like suppose n was let's say like four, then I mean just you're just trying to pair up each, you're just trying to look at n and then what would be its next half, or if you're looking at this term, it's going down. Well, the whole point is that you still, what are we gonna have to replace here? Well, we'll just have to change the m term. So at first it's not going to look like very different. Okay. Um, and this is where we have to note that. Well, we have this additional term here, so let's try to compute what it is. We have that e to the 2 pi n over 2 n over 2. n, well, the n's are going to cancel out, and this 2 is going to divide this 2. So we'll get e to the negative i pi i n. Can anyone tell me what this is in terms of n? that the even terms are not going to change, so we can leave it like that. 
but for the odd terms, we have to multiply by negative one. So we're going to see that it leads to something very cool, which is we get this. not very different from what we had here, except that now we get the, this kind of like cool symmetry, which is that Vm plus n over 2 is equal to Am minus e to the 2 times Imn. and you'll, have, you'll, you'll get that decomposition of your number. So I'll be a little bit, um, I'll be a little bit fast about this. Um, so we can just check. So, uh, so the proof is the plan is to check that f of b n is equal to the decomposition we have. That we're done because we could have we could set let's say v equal to like one zero zero and or whatever you want and then we'll get that each like if we if this is true for all v like you can believe me that this means that this implies that f is equal to this. Okay. Um, so let's just check the first step. And let, let's just look how let's see how this looks.
vector that we cut after doing all these steps is the uh, root n over 2 minus 1. V0, V, M over 2 minus 1. And then you can convince yourself that uh, if, let's say, if you have a term that's in the upper half, then uh, once you do this multiplication, you'll get that. Uh, you get that this first term because of this how it's going to interact with the identity matrix, and with this dm is going to be equal to am. Plus, and recall that our, our dn goes to pi that way, so that's it's e to the pi i m divided by m. Dm. And if m over 2 minus We don't have any time for questions. Next is Olga Medrano Martin del Campo. Can you moderate? Uh, okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 